What is up, people? Give me one second. All right here. Started in just a minute, guys. What's up, Nuclear Fusion? What's up, Murphy? Give me just a minute. I'm just sharing the stream. And then me and Sean will be trading off. What's up, Aaron? What's up, King Mike? guys give me like 30 seconds I'm just sharing it on the main channel all right let's do this So we have played the tutorial, we have both played one offline match, so now let's see. No, do I want to do that? Yeah, do I want to... Hang on. What's up Gavin? with an AI controlled team of survivors against an AI controlled demon. Yeah, let's just do another one of these. It's always a pain in the ass to do live streaming while you're <laughs> supposed to be talking to your team. Gotta be Army of Darkness Ash. Yes! <laughs> Somebody asked, is this game good? Um, it's... It's fun, but what I suspect is going to be my issue, which was my same issue with Friday the 13th, is it's that really it's a concept that will get old quickly. A Kandarian demon. I beg you to perform the following actions in order to prevent its further spread. All right. Um, so, oh shit! You know what I just did? First Hang up. Is to I messed the up. Pieces of a map that you'll find nearby. Let me change for my location of the lost pages of the Necronomicon and Kendarian Dagger. Move camera. Move it here in the middle. All right. Fire tower. So that's over here. Heads up. Look at this. Yep. Sean is actually editing the last piece of that video right now. If you're a patron, you get ear early access. There you go. Will I be watching and reviewing men? Yes, but it's not going to be this weekend. We debated on maybe doing that tonight, and we decided that we were just going to chill tonight because we got a four-hour drive tomorrow plus a whole weekend of con stuff. So most likely I will be watching men either on Monday or Tuesday. But I do plan to watch it and review it, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically the object of this game is that it's a, you know, four people versus one. And you Time to get blasted have to find these pieces of the map 
which Your will tell you where the Necronomicon pages are Keep and where the Kondarian dagger is. Then you have to get those two things. Then you have to defeat, defeat the demon. Collect a piece of the map near Harry's houses. I hear demons, but I don't see demons. Alright. Uh, Harry's houses. You can all get in a vehicle. This one obviously is not working for some reason. Uh, there's one up here. Well, where is that thing at anyway? That's over there. Yeah, let's get this vehicle. Oh shit! Twelve hours long. Okay, the file is already uploaded. It is six hours, twenty-two minutes, and forty-seven seconds. Rookie numbers. <laughs> I was shocked at how many people actually watched mine last year when it was seven hours and change. I was like, is there really a market for this? And that video exploded. I think when you search Blu-ray collection, I think it's the first one that pops up. I was not expecting to have that. I figured it'd be some diehards. And then a bunch of people going, are you out of your mind? I'm not wasting seven hours of my life looking at your Blu-rays. But there is a crowd for that video, for sure. Yeah, it's it's very similar to Friday the 13th. Uh, instead of Jason hunting you, it's the demon. The humans are trying to gather the Necronomicon together and expel the demon. The demon is trying to scare the humans enough to where they can be possessed and then kill them before they can achieve their goal. Another piece of the map has been collected. Oh, okay, good. Your group is making progress against the Dark Spirit. Alright, give me some stuff. I don't have no good weapons. There's gotta be some stuff in here. There at least a single player. No, there's some standalone missions, but they're essentially exactly what I'm doing now, but they just tie a story reason to some objective that you're doing. Like, I played one where you're trying to get your girlfriend from the first movie's necklace, but it's exactly the same thing that I'm doing now. You're just running to an objective. Like a piece of the map near Railway. Yes, Bruce Campbell does do a lot of voiceover. You can tell it's made by fans of the movies, I will say that. Uh, folks, you're gonna want to take a look at this. See? There you go. You can play the version of Ash from all three of the movies, as well as the TV series. All of the side characters are from all of the movies, with the exception of the remake. The demons, the deadites, they're all characters from the movies. The settings are from the movies to an extent. Like I said, yeah, thus far, my only um, concern is that, much like with Friday the 13th, where it's like, well, this is fun for a little while, and then it's like, yeah, it's the same thing over and over and over again. I feel like it's going to be one of those games, which I kind of knew walking into it. I haven't heard much about Evil Dead Rise, aside from the fact that it's going to be uh, straight to streaming, and it's supposed to come out this year, I believe. I want to say HBO Max, but I could be wrong. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued with what it's going to be. I still don't... I'm, I'm still baffled why they never followed up the remake. I thought the remake was pretty successful, and fans, for the most part, love it. Um, I pre-ordered it from Best Buy, and I got two, two, like, variant outfits for the Army of Darkness, Ash. That's all I got. 
am I gonna check out the Texas Chainsaw? The game? It just depends. I mean, I'm sure I will, but I think it's gonna be the same thing as this. It's gonna be Leatherface versus Survivors. And as much as it's cool that these horror franchises are getting these video games, I I wish they'd do something else with it. I wish they'd make like a story, not just multiplayer stuff. What's up? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I did get that pre-order. It was uh, the two different costumes that he wears in the movie. going on right now is that uh, my fear is up. So you have to find a lit area. Uh, now it's gone back down. Alright. Where the hell is this map? Ooh, is that chainsaw? Chainsaw! Oh, give me faith! Now I just gotta find my boomstick. And all is right with the world. This will do for now, I guess. What were my thoughts on the Avatar 2 trailer? Uh, it looked gorgeous. I have no idea what the story is. My excitement has not raised or lowered whatsoever. Can't read the rest of that comment there, Murphy. Donkey Kong on the Nintendo Switch. Um, I remember it being a little difficult. A good one for your daughter if she likes, uh, if she's not like sensitive to ghosts, even if they're cartoon ghosts, is the uh, Luigi's Mansion 3. That's a really fun game that's not too difficult. It's kind of like Ghostbusters. Railway loop, let's go this way. Heads it. up! Look at this. Word on the street, Sean might beat your record for the longest Blu-ray haul video. You must have missed it, some neat. We've already expelled that rumor. Send him about four or five more packages, though, and I'm sure he'll... He'll outdo me. Credit where credit is due, though. <laughs> Sean's recording a new one every year. You won't see that kind of energy from me. <laughs> I recorded it. The, the only one map. I've ever done in I think of the nine Omicron different sessions. And Kandarian Dagger are within reach. My plan will yes. only succeed with these items. Game's decent. Put a smile on your face if you're an Evil Dead fan. I just um I don't think it's going to be a game that I'm going to dump a lot of time into. Well, Brian Lomax doesn't play video games, so even if it was a Batman game, he couldn't care less. I think he gets motion sick or something like that, or he doesn't. Something about yeah. it, he said he can't ever really get into a game. Or Sean have a favorite steel book? I personally don't. Sean does not either.
collection of the Kandarian or something. Dagger has begun. This represents a grave threat to the evil dead. Be prepared to do battle. Uh, I would love to see Mia join this. Uh, would you recommend? It just depends if you like these multiplayer type games. Like I've said a couple of times already, this is a game that I probably will have fun with for a week. And then I will quickly move on from it. Because there's not enough variety. But there are some people that absolutely adore the Friday the 13th game and love Dead by Daylight, things like that. This is for those type of people. Yeah, the side-by-side -side recreations on that uh, Texas Chainsaw game looked incredible. I just, I wish they would do something more creative with it than, hey, here you go, you're dropped into a, a Texas farm. Avoid Leatherface for 30 minutes. No, you're not crazy. Whenever they announce GTA 6, I'm sure it'll be the highest selling game of all time. And um, somebody asked, oh, I forgot the question already. Will Ragnarok be delayed? I think there's a 50-50 shot because they have not said anything about it or talked about it here recently. And I kind of expect nowadays any AAA game is going to get delayed at least once. I kind of hate that that's become a trend. I wish they just wouldn't release a, a release date for it until they were sure that they were finished with it. By all means, make sure it's finished. Don't ship it incomplete. But uh, it's annoying. Yeah, I um, I would not be surprised in the slightest if they delayed that till 23. Your team now holds the Kendarian Dagger. Thoughts on the Thor 4 trailer and She-Hulk trailer? Well, uh, I have not watched the She-Hulk trailer. I honestly didn't have any interest. And the, uh, the screenshots didn't look all that good. So, haven't cared. The Thor 4 trailer, looks like it's probably going to be fun. I really enjoyed Ragnarok. I'm sure I'll really enjoy that one. I'm not um, chomping at the bit for it or anything like that, but I'm sure it'll be fun. 600 yards. Jeez. Pray that they don't delay Spider-Man 2. You can expect at least one delay with that one. Yeah, I'm not so much burnt out on Marvel, I just, I have not really loved any of the Disney Plus shows that I've watched. They've all disappointed me. And so, when you have a show like She-Hulk that I'm not really that interested in right off the bat anyway, I'm just not chomping at the bit to to watch it. Same with Miss Marvel, I really don't, don't care too much. But then, as me and Sean were talking about at lunch today, I'm also a little bit worried about that because if I choose not to watch some of these shows, am I going to get to a movie and be lost? Because Multiverse of Madness, good luck understanding half of that movie if you haven't watched WandaVision. What trilogy do I enjoy more, Nolan's trilogy or the Raimi trilogy? Uh, the Raimi trilogy means a bit more to me. I think you can probably find a video on YouTube, Murphy, that can kind of recap WandaVision for you if you just don't have any interest in watching it. But I would not suggest watching Multiverse of Madness without watching 
either the show or a recap because what the hell is that mean? Am I possessed? I'm not possessed. Crap. <laughs> Kill them all. Because <laughs> yeah, there's a large piece of that movie's story that um, you really need to know what happened in WandaVision to understand. Good lord. Am I playing again? I'm playing again. Okay. Huh? I did not. I had a super chat. Um. Unban me on your main channel. Uh. To be honest with you, I don't remember why I did. Uh, you don't have to super chat it, but can you remind me of any reason why I might have? Unfortunately, there's no way to keep record of that, but I wouldn't do that for no reason. I wouldn't call it a Friday the 13th clone, but it's certainly uh, a cousin, if nothing else. The team has awakened the lost pages, sparking terror into the black heart of the world. Expect resistance. By the way, your tier Don't list bid. <laughs> they love to cut off your comments, Murphy. Hidden figures joke involving a racial slur. Well, that's not cool. Um, when you say I banned you, what do you mean? Did you uh, just did I block you on the channel, or do you just can't comment on live streams? What's the deal? Super chat. So it's probably just blocking from commenting. I will um give you a second chance, man. But yeah, don't do that again, please. I don't take that kind of stuff lightly. So. Yes, this is AI teammates. I didn't want to join humans and have them listen to me hold the talking pages to the chat the, the whole time. The rarest and most powerful artifacts in our world. Alright, let's The see lost here. pages and Kendarian dagger are in your possession. You have Do either of you, you ha have a least favorite game? least favorite game. No, I don't tend to remember games that I have not liked. Yeah, exactly, and I immediately forget about it. did play the Guardians game. I, I enjoyed it for the first half or so, but the game was way too long, and the fighting was way too repetitive, and so I got really burnt out on it in the last four or five hours or so. Um, I loved it for the first few hours. I was surprised how much I really liked it, but it did not 
maintain that for me. Get in. Give me some sugar. Video game tier rankings? Possibly. There's a lot of stuff that gets opened up once you start doing those, because I obviously I have only done one. So there's a lot of things that I have ranked that I can go back and do a tier ranking for. There's a lot of things that I have not ranked that I can do either a ranking or a tier rank. So I don't, I don't know. I'm still kind of wetting my feet into that one. Again, it's a concept that I'm not, I'm not overly passionate about because I don't personally watch them. But everybody's really seems to enjoy the Night Round Elm Street one, so I'm more than happy to do more. They're not difficult, but. Uh, I'm not gonna like start being the tier ranking guy, I'll tell you that much. The hard thing about um, video game rankings of any kind is that you have to have played all of them. And it's much, much easier to catch back up on a franchise of movies that you haven't seen them all than it is for video games that you haven't played. Because some of them you can't find. Some of them are really, really dated and hard to go back to. That's what makes it difficult sometimes. Like, I'd love to do like a Splinter Cell ranking and a, a Silent Hill ranking and stuff, but there's a lot of Silent Hills that I've never played that I'm not going to be able to find. Sean's up. Yeah. I will have the chat open over here, so Sean will be audibly answering questions while I'll answer some text-wise. I've seen Return of the Living Dead 3. It's actually my favorite of the trilogy, although I have not seen two, so that's a little bit of an ignorant statement, but three's pretty fun. What villain do you want for the Batman 2? Um, I'd like to see Hugo Strange. I think that would fit into that Matt Reeves world pretty easily. Uh, I have read comics. I own quite a few. There's a whole bookshelf that's attached to this wall right here on the outside, but um, I have not read very many. I've bought a few of like the graphic novels and some of the big book sets of like Batman comics, M Walking Dead, stuff like that. Oh, I can hear myself in my head. Okay. Do missions? Oh, these are these really work. I really could. It's like, why can't you hear me? Just I'm right, Nick. Okay. Oh yeah, people are watching me. Oh. Okay. I'll just do what we did before. Okay. 
shark man ever seen a clockwork orange I have seen a clockwork orange I have not watched it recently um, but I have seen it multiple times in the past okay there we go I clicked on the wrong thing I was like why did I go into a private match because I can't read and um, yeah I mean it, it's it's a movie that sticks with you like having not seen it in a long time there's all sorts of images sequences ideas that are just as fresh in my mind 20 years later as whenever I watch it it's, it's probably been 17 years since I last watched it alright I, I, I've been playing as Evil Dead 2 Ash. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll go with Army of Dark. Good. Bad. I'm the guy with the gun. Who would win, Ash or Doom? Log entry six. I know now oh, what I have unleashed so, unto this. So I haven't. I played Doom and Doom 2 30 years ago. The future is in your so hands. my experience is Follow a little bit dated. To the letter. Okay, who do I got? Okay, there are good. several pieces of a map hidden near Fishing nearby. village. Gather okay. them to ascertain the Already location of the lost pages of the Necronomicon and Kandarian Dagger. Uh, Cody, has Sean got you hooked on the office yet? I have not even tried to get him hooked on the office. That has not been a mission of mine. Uh, we even ever even talked about the office? Have you ever seen the office? Yeah. Well, it, it, the the tone changes a lot over the course of the show. Um, and so different seasons have a different vibe. Um, like the early one, the first season is very cynical, and then it lightens with. They changed the tone a lot intentionally going into the second season, and then um, the cast started to gel a lot more in the second season. But it's also one of those ones you have to spend time watching it to even get the feel for what it is and what it's trying to do. Uh, if you just watch a clip and don't get the characters and stuff like that, I just don't know how it plays. I can confirm, the last time I was here, he was trying really hard to get me to like King of Queens. By trying really hard, I mean he just watched a couple episodes. Uh, yes, he did. I'd never seen Impractical Jokers. Oh, there it is. Found it. Impractical Jokers prior to um, coming over here. That, not one episode. The movie came out. I didn't know what it was, so I didn't. I skipped it. And then we watched like now a full season while I was here. Went home, Small, took it home to my family, and literally almost every night at dinner, that's what we watch. And my demonic tree. Oh, that's right next door. That's convenient. Uh, wait, wait over there. Oh, they probably no, they don't need my help. Uh. Right. Yeah. And that's um. And we did the fail army and stuff like that a lot. Um, but. Those are you can only do those like once a week because it, it's there's no plot or anything like that, and so then um, Impractical Jokers is now literally stuck with us for about three months. Were there any questions in there I missed? Okay. Oh, Cody, you? How about you and a Clockwork Orange? Really? No Doctor Strange love. Yeah, it's basically a prequel to the MCU Doctor Strange. Uh, same tone, same visual effects. I hope some tunes in expecting that. That would be bring great joy to my life. Ha! 
I made light. Let's see you primitives do that. Oh, there. Dreamy Panda. Hello, Uncle Sean. Hello, Dreamy Panda. Oh, this will dissect the dead eye just fine. What did I just do? What am I missing? Where's the steps to go up there? Okay, there we go. now holds an additional piece of the map. Well played. Okay, Valley Lodge. Lucky Valley, Lucky Valley Lodge, there it is. Who we got, uh, what was that question that someone just asked? That, that's it. You, why don't you throw a few out there and see if that can spark my brain a little bit. I don't know if I know the... Uh, un I feel like the inherent nature of the horror genre is to the mainstream, most of them are underrated that are the, the, the fans love. Um, in which case, that it's a tough question for this very specific um, Heads up. genre. Look at this. Yes, yes, frailty is underrated, yes. Stop! You're shooting me! Oh, she's on my team, I should probably stop shooting her. Yeah, I don't. The I mean, that's kind of the I irony of some of it. The the channels that inspired me to start, I don't really watch them mu much anymore. And it's not a that's not a statement about them. That's not um, that uh, I don't like them anymore. It's not that. It's just when you live in the world of creating that content, you don't want to consume it. Uh, like you just you need a break from it, and you also don't want to just start mirroring what other people are saying. And it's very easy to do that when you just, uh, you listen to Stuckman, Johns, Campia, whoever your pick your, pick your person, listen to them too much, and you'll just start talking like them. Well, I, I maybe it's a pretty boring answer, but I mean, the Spider-Man game is pretty amazing. Um, it's just a really well done game. Um, that even with quick load Final times, has been collected. That stuff Making like that is whole again found to be revealing great the about it. Of the um, and the lost pages of the Necronomicon. Uh, what was the question before that? I had another thought. Yeah, I, yeah. So I I watch um, movie channels, but not ones that do what I do. So I'll watch like Joe Blow's uh, WTF this movie. Like I watch almost all of those. So even some of the 
31 on 31s recently, they have a ton of Joe Blows uh, about those exact movies, like Omen and oh, this last one, so many of them are in there. Um, and so I, I watch a lot of things like that. There's this channel called Minty's Comedic Arts, where he does uh, 10 facts about movies and corny jokes. I watch a lot of his videos. He just has a, he's about my age, so he has the same nostalgia picks as me. And so I watch a lot of things like that. Um, and then just a lot of stuff that's not at all movie related at all. Yes, collect the lost pages. Oh, uh, lost pages. Do you know if there's an order I need to do pages or dagger? Okay. So yeah. So uh, yes, I haven't watched this week's episode yet. I I was gonna wait to binge it because that's how I watched the rest of it. But the gentleman to my right said, "Hey man, there's some stuff happening and." I would recommend a different course of action, just in case. Yeah, I, um, so I, we watched through it, and we just, I've been crazy swamped this last week getting ready for this trip, and then the doing the Blu-ray haul video, uh, it just kind of turned into back-to-back 15-hour -back days. Where am I underground? Where did I go? Oh, yeah, so I haven't been on this one. So I, I was as early of an adopter of The Walking Dead as you can be. I uh, saw the first trailer and bought a season, the season pass because I didn't have cable. Still don't have cable. Cable, and I watched season one probably ten times before season two came out. That's how big of a fan I was from uh, Matchsticks from the very beginning. And my page is this way. Uh, and then was excited when season two rolled around, and then it just kind of felt like it was meandering. This is uh, I can't jump. Um, Why are you doing this to me? But so, just felt like it was meandering, and then it got to the end, and it was like okay. And then it moved. We moved to the next location. It just season three. It just seemed like okay, right? Um, they go somewhere. They think they're safe. They realize that the other humans, the actual threat, the actual monsters. Okay, they go somewhere else. They think they're safe, and then they realize that the other humans, the actual monsters. Okay. Well, I figured out this show, and it, it also kind of lined up. My wife doesn't do those things like that at all. So, like, I mean, she didn't watch the last 20 minutes of Doctor Strange 2. Uh, legitimately was covering her eyes because she doesn't do zombies. That's not her thing. And so then it, having a show that was watching by myself without her, it was right as we had a newborn. So I just, I just kind of stopped. And as I stopped, the show just exploded in popularity. Like, I was the earliest of adopters and, like, the earliest of abandoners. Um, that's my experience with it, so... And I, I thought about trying to play catch-up on it, get it watched, uh, for the finale and everything, but... Just... It's not enough time. And there's too many things to watch, and TV shows are just so hard to binge. Ooh. 
Yeah, I, I saw it in the theater when it, when it came out because it's his first movie he directed, um, and I didn't know what to, to expect from him. But that's even before Braveheart. He uh, he directed that one, and um, but that was literally almost 30 years ago. <laughs> I, I think I might have seen it afterwards, but. I mean, his first movie, it, it's unlike his other movies in almost every sense. Biggest one being that it's not in any way epic. Um, so, make of that what you will, but... Still no matchsticks. No matchsticks. Let's kind of make our way. You can just put your face right next to mine. They're with me. They can bring me back if anything happens. Oh. Do you guys have any matches? Team matches? Like, I don't have to do everything myself. guys have any advice on starting a blu-ray collection uh, by blue <laughs> um yeah i mean not really sometimes i, I get kind of asked that question pretty frequently and i i don't i kind of don't understand the question because i i don't know what you need advice on um because it I, I i never went into it with the the concept of what's my strategy for doing this it was just uh-oh someone's mad at me Oh, no, I just shot her. Yeah. But, I mean, I just bought movies because I like movies. And then, sometimes I would buy a special edition because it had cool features or it had, like, the packaging or something like that. But the thought was never specifically, um, man, how do I have the best strategy for collecting? Uh, you know, there's, you kind of learn that Best Buy usually has some that are on sale. Uh, you can buy all sorts of more obscure stuff on Amazon. If you like interesting special features for, I don't know if obscure is the right word, but more kind of cult classic or niche films, Scream Factory, Shot Factory, they normally have some pretty cool uh, stuff. But I don't know if that's even tips for how to do it right, but um, just buy them. Find Wherever you're at, find the ones that have it cheap and just know what you enjoy about owning physical media and find a way to do that at cost effectively. Somebody asked whenever Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul show up in the Yeah, I, I don't Right. I, I don't... I want whatever makes sense in a plot way. Um, a friend of mine who follows the show very closely in the production and has all along, he mentioned that way back in like season one, season two, Brian Cranston did a set visit to Better Call Saul and was there and is well publicized. It was kind of a big deal. And he theorizes that they, they shot whatever it was years ago just to avoid aging uh, because like if you do something that's like trying to even where could you possibly do anything like Go back to Vader just and in died. the old the man evil spirits will whatever is the name of room, the guy that the works at Cinnabon room. version you can do something with Jess there but yeah like you said Walt wh wh what can you do with Jess there that um, Aaron Paul looks like a 40-year-old a, a dude. He does not in any way look like a guy that is in his mid-twenties. Oh. 
Well, I mean, the, the whole movie kind of... Well, the whole movie stretched because of Jess Plemons, who absolutely did not look the same. <laughs> um, but even Aaron Paul there was pushing 40, and he just did not look the way that he looked when he did those that the last season. Um, and especially in the sense that the finale is only two years after the premiere, and he was obviously much older. He was obviously 10 years older, or over 10 years older. So I, I don't know what they're going to do, and I don't know how you could do it, but I'm, I trust the writers, but it's tough to not be nervous about that one, or when it's just, there's not an obvious way to do it. Yeah. And like if you go back to watch season two and the first appearances of Saul, I mean, you it's pretty obvious that he's twelve years older now. Um but even that, like a guy going from forty eight to, to sixty, but taking really good care of himself is just not the same thing as like a, a still youthful Aaron Paul to a very clearly middle aged Aaron Paul. It's just Facial facial changes and things like that. That uh oh. Sean, any podcast that you listen to nowadays? Oh, well, that's not good. I marked my map on nonsense. I had to. Where am I supposed to go? I collected the dagger and the. Well, I'm in trouble. I need to find a car. Apparently, answering questions and reading questions, well, it's a good way to get yourself. I guess it's the question of what what timeline is it when when will he show up? Because there you obviously have the parts where he's dead, but you also have parts where uh, they do flashes to all, during the Breaking Bad timeline too of when everything was falling apart. So there's a number of options for what they could do, or it could be uh, flash to early in the season two era. But I don't know what one they're gonna do. Hollow. Uh, like, I mean, Todd is exactly what he's supposed to be, and awful in in that, but Lalo is um, dramatically more fun because he's, like, a charismatic sociopath. Yeah. Which is perfect, uh, but... Uh-oh. Uh Probably Saturday, I don't know. Maybe well, Saturday, but what's Saturday? Or, for people that are supporters on Patreon, tomorrow. Hey, are you not reading this sexy Chad XYZ adult dating? What kind of weird, uh, weird subscribers do you have? <laughs> it's all the things that, that they have the smartest AI for making recommendations, but they can't come up with an AI that can figure out that that's a spam bot. Good job, Google.
Uh, so favorite Breaking Bad season? I, I mean, I have a ranking. Um, in general, I felt like the show got better as it went along. Um, and so the the first two were figuring things out a little bit, and you know, shorter season for season one, some odd choices for season two. Um, and then three was just fantastic, and then four and five were just amazing. You know, best seasons of television ever. I like five because, you know, Todd, you know, kills some kids. And, you know, that's obviously my thing. So I was really into that. <laughs> but but does Walt just like shoot a kid and like what 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 <laughs> what's the big deal <laughs> Couldn't believe the traces he made with Luke. Um, I don't know. I, like, I've just never watched Breaking Bad in an episodic manner, and so I, I've just never thought about it in those terms in that way at all. You have obtained the Kandarian dagger, a legendary artifact with power to burn undead flesh. So I've, I've gone through the show beginning to end two times. And neither time did I go, what? What is this episode? And then I've, I've heard that of like, if there's one bad episode, it's the the fly episode. I was like, oh yeah, I guess there is an episode where they're trying to kill a fly. I guess that is a little bit weird. That it's a little bit different, but I, I never really thought about it the way other people did. But, um, I, you know, I just don't have favorite episodes. I don't, none of them really stand out. Like, I think about it in moments, and then if someone tells me, oh yeah, Ryan Johnson directed one where Hank, this happened to Hank, and it was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty amazing, but I just thought about the season and the story arc because I watched four episodes that night. Okay, leader, take me wherever I'm supposed to go. I think I need to get a car. I think that's my car. I need some more of these. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I watched Army of Darkness in, like, 96 or 97. Um, and then I don't know, I don't remember exactly how long after that I started moving backwards. Um, but I watched Army of Darkness all the time. Um, oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's not good. But, I mean, it, it was easily over 20 years ago. Maybe 25 years ago is the first time I watched Evil Dead. Hey, a man's body is only 
personal property. Oh, good call. Oh, no, that's a possessed car. Why are you doing this to me? I guess our time is up. Uh oh. Yeah. I am truly sorry for the devastation I've caused. <laughs> Failure to close the rift is not your burden to bear. It is simply the end. I feel like every time I get to the end where I've got all the pages and then I'm supposed to get the pages plus the dagger and I'm just doing something wrong because I go to both of them and it tells me no you got to go back to the other one so that's where I said is you have to go to an order is there that's where I'm missing Okay. Oh. Okay. Try and do it right this time. Dominate. Now I gotta go to bed. I woke up at, uh, for me, I woke up at, uh, 2.30 in the morning. So... Woo! But it was 2.30 my time. Something so it was 3.30 your time. So I'm, I'm only on, you know, 22 hours. Uh. This is Professor Raymond Noby. Or do I'm 21. Sean has taken over the channel. That's how I roll. Has resurrected a Kandarian demon. I cannot rectify my error, but execution of the following instructions. May Does this have single player speed. mode or is it just multiplayer? Yeah. Drawn a map and split it into pieces to hide yeah. them from There's, the demon. Um, like the right now, I'm the playing with AIs, the and the lost but there's the no economy. story mode. There's not a campaign. It's just there's ways to play the game by yourself, but yeah, it's uh it's a multi asymmetrical multiplayer game is what it is. Which that is a huge disappointment for me. Misery man. We should avoid that area. Cody, just curious, is there a window or opportunity where you and Sean will watch Misery together? No. No, it's true. It's a good question. Yeah, that's Survivors have acquired the first piece of the map. Take heart. I think I can make this work. I 
do not actually know much about misery. But now the real question is it gonna be? Why did he ask you that question? It's a mystery. There it is, old double barrel. Sean, how has Halloween Kills held up for you since its release out of curiosity? Um, I I haven't rewatched it at home. I I don't. There's not a lot of movies I'm able to rewatch at home because I'm just there's so many things I have to watch. Um, and there's a perpetual backlog of things I want to watch. So I haven't rewatched it yet. Um. As I recall, my review is essentially really enjoyed the Carnage candy. There's some ideas here that I really enjoyed or that I think fit nicely, but it just strains way too much credibility. It's, frust it's just so frustrating how much credibility it strains with the logic, the stupidity of the characters, and um, what are what Michael Myers can survive. Um, I, I mean, I think the idea of it makes sense, and I think that, like, the idea that this, the city, with this long history of trauma from what happened before, and it's happening again, and so the, the town turns to mob rule, and mob rule has horrible consequences, I mean, I think all of that is a, is a good idea, but... Did it play right in what they actually did with it? Uh... Yeah, and, and so it just kind of, it just rang really hollow played strange and then with how it the sequence ends and uh, like it ending tragically that seems like well yeah of course that needs to, that was kind of the, the inevitable conclusion to this but the actual image that they chose to use of after it plays out was like well, ah that's that's gross but in a way that's it plays very weird uh, oh wait, is that? No, that's just a light. Okay, this is where we're supposed to be. So then let's try this over here. You might want to see this. Okay, 67 yards this way. John, have you heard of the show Severance? I have heard of the show Severance. I have not seen the show. Um, I don't really know anything about it. Uh, it's just one of those things that I've uh, heard chatter about. You have about. obtained another section of the map. Sure, luck is on your side. Dun dun dun. Uh. Light 666. 
Sean, are you even a gamer? Um, you'd have to define the term gamer. I... It's become a family thing, but yes. Yeah. It's like, everybody likes movies. That doesn't mean everyone's a movie fan the way that people that watch my channel are movie fans. Um, and in that sense, do I play video games? Yeah, I play video games pretty regularly right now, but it's like, uh, it's normally centered around things I can play with my family. So, uh, right now that means Fortnite. That doesn't mean that there's not games that I'm interested in, but it's just not the priority when I have all these movies I have to watch. That just, it just eats up my time and just doesn't give me a lot of opportunities to just play games that I just want to play. different in different phases of life I found very funny. So. With the final piece of the map in your possession, only the demon stands between you Res and the necessary <laughs> ritual. Man, I listened to a lot of Bill Cosby growing up. Oh. Um. Oh. Uh. Ten years ago, I listened to a lot of, uh, Jim Gaffigan uh, and his food jokes. Um, I can't say that there's much stand-up that I've listened to in the last five years. I just haven't. There's not really any story there. They just haven't. I haven't thought about it. Um, I have thought about trying to do stand-up on my own. I wanted to do that. That feels like the the thing that I, I haven't done and have been afraid to do, but I think if I actually put time into it, I could probably do all right. I wouldn't embarrass myself horribly. Oh, dagger's right there. Okay, grab the dagger first. What, do you, do you have to defend the dagger? Okay. But, um, yeah, just if you guys can say the words of encouragement to, uh, convince me to put my stand-up routine together. Kandarian Demon. The Kandarian Dagger is nearly yours. Summon your courage and stay close. Stay close. Okay, there we go. I've almost figured out what I'm supposed to do in this game. They're getting very close to me not being totally incompetent and moving into mostly incompetent.
see. I'm sure it's pretty. Oh. Our internet is just a mess. It just frequently has outages and slows down. We'll call them like, hey, our internet's terrible. Like, oh, it doesn't say anything's wrong. Well, I, I'm telling you it's wrong. I'm telling you that. Um... I mean... I, I edit out 99% of them. You are in possession but of the Kandarian you, dagger. Like, Many you, I don't think you're really protecting this artifact. Yeah, like you, you're, like, like oh, you just yeah. have, like you, you, to stuff. put out content as regularly as we put out content. It's demon hunting time. It just takes a tremendous amount of time to shoot, edit, write everything. Where one man shows, and when you do it all yourself, you kind of view it differently. It's tough also to go back and watch yourself to proofread it proper or proof watch it properly. So it's just stupid stuff happens. And like I don't e I don't have any idea how frequent it is. Like but like I have all sorts of safety things like oh make sure I do this to check to make sure but like a lot of how I edit is uh, visual. I use the, the audio wave to edit and you can just miss things. I mean it's like it's did you get a hundred on every assignment in school? No, of course not. Uh, did you make little mistakes, miss things? Of course you did. It's your job. Do you overlook things? Yeah. And when you crank out as much content as we crank out, it just happens. It... I could never get enough of it. It's yeah, but, and so I, I used to sweat a lot that a lot of that stuff more and was more embarrassed by it. But I just kind of reached a point of like it's just part of the cost of being a one-man show, but it's also part of the charm that you know it's me. Like it, uh, I try and put out really good content, but also I'm not a slick studio. I don't have an editor. I might have one soon, because um, I'm kind of reaching the max of what I can do on my own, but at the moment, it's all me doing everything. So, someone asks, have I, uh, have, do we watch Survivor? I can tell you, today, literal, are we after midnight? Oh. Four hours ago, I watched my first episode of Survivor. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. It was a jump scare. It was a uh, evil ass just popped up like a, <laughs> just right in the face. Of a <laughs> uh, 
Um, does does it rob of the joy of the movie? Um, like I, I don't, I wouldn't describe it that way. It's certainly not in the in the sense of it making a being a problem for the one movie. I don't think about it that way. Reviewing movies in general, I think, can have a negative effect on enjoying movies as a whole because it becomes work. And, you know, you have to make lists of all these movies you need to watch and you have to watch movies just to review them. And um, it, that can have an effect on your enjoyment of movies as a whole. It's not so much, uh, I, I'm not going to like this movie because I have to review it. I wouldn't phrase it that way. Um, though, I, I mean, I think there certainly can be a side to it of, uh, you're watching Stay it in a context position. for the purpose of review rather than the context of enjoyment. But it's it's not the the way you, the language you, you described it wouldn't add a different focus than I would say with the actual issue I have. Dude, 21. Hey, Sean, do you ever get er I get to see movies. I get to bring a guest almost every time, but I don't get tickets that I can give away. Like, that... That doesn't happen. Um, other people kind of get that sort of thing, but that's not a... a Sean experience. Um, you know, when you watch one episode and it's the next to last episode of the season, it's, uh, doesn't really, it's tough to have a informed, meaningful, in-depth take. Um, but, but I mean, it's a pretty classic formula that's been going on for 20 years and, you know, I, I've watched shows like it. I, I get the appeal. I, um, if my wife Survivors was like, hey, let's watch Survivor, I'd be like, sure, come. whatever. Uh, I'd be fine with that. A step to um, I, so I didn't, I didn't, I don't know that I had any specific interest in thoughts. Armed with the lost pages and the Kandarian dagger, we must now oh. expel the Dark Ones from oh. our realm. <laughs> well... This is why I've been losing. Now we got this. Easy, easy. Victory time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've, um... In, in, what button am I supposed to push here? It was triangle. Um. Oh, don't. don't. Oops, the daisies. Um. Not going out. Stranger Things. Yeah, I. Uh, um. Yeah, I've been watching since the first season dropped and reviewed seasons. I guess I reviewed all three seasons technically. Uh, what it, the season one was one of my earliest videos on my channel. Um. But um. Oh man. We, <laughs> down. <laughs> we might be in trouble. Uh oh. That was it. Defeat. Um. Yeah, I, I I wasn't crazy about season two, but otherwise, um, one and three I thought were really good. I'm optimistic for the new one. I don't have any reason to be cynical. Uh, they didn't they didn't rush it. I guess I am a little bit concerned because I heard that the the time jump is only like two months.
which is stupid when you're dealing with kids that went from 14 to 18 or whatever it is. Uh, so that's, that seems like a very strange choice. Um, that's the only reason I, concern I really have. Um, I think there's another question. Yeah, I'll wrap it up, but I think there's a couple more questions in there. I think it's an interesting experiment. Um, I mean, we'll see how it goes. I'm willing to... It, like, it, it doesn't... It's an experiment, but it doesn't seem like a... It seems like a very safe experiment of, like... Sci-fi adventure movie with a popular character with uh, a twist that's just interesting enough. Just, like, huh. Oh, yeah, what if... What if we made a movie out of the movie that Andy went to go see? Huh. Okay. That's kind of interesting. Now, what, they, they put some stuff in the trailers where they revealed some things that... When I saw it, I went, oh. I didn't know that. I don't... Why didn't you... Why did you put that in the trailer? You, it seems like you could easily market this without revealing that plot point. And then... My wife hadn't seen it at home, and we were in the theater, and it, it played the, the trailer, the latest trailer that kind of had this plot point. And she went, oh, I, I didn't want to know that. Why did they put that in there? You could market this without saying it. I was like, that's exactly what I said. Have you seen the latest trailer for it? So, I, just be careful. There's, it, it gives a, it, it gives a, a piece about the plot that feels like, I just don't know why you would, it seems like you, you could, you were selling it. You got the tone, the vibe, the humor, kind of the idea. And then you just really kind of gave one of your big twists right there. I just don't know how you'd do that. And I get there's, like, I, when you do that with a property that you really have to convince the audience of what it is, I get it. But as soon as you... Pixar! Buzz Lightyear! You're going to make over 100 million opening weekend. You don't have to sell beyond that. And you definitely don't need to give away plot points. But they did. All right. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Um, this was a little bit of a fun little adventure. For, oh, wait, I guess there's a question. This is for you, Cody. Are you... Are you guys worried about Ruining it? I'm not worried about them ruining it. I am concerned about what it's going to be. It, yeah, and then they, they got the guy that directed Free Guy and The Atom Project, which, as family adventure films, I really enjoyed both of them. But at the same time, they're not, they're not Deadpool. And um, that has me concerned. That specifically makes me go, ooh, uh, I don't understand. Why did you, like, why would you, hmm. Um, so, um, that even the director really is kind of the thing at the moment that has me most concerned, which is frustrating because it, he literally, his track record at the moment is like, oh man, he just did two really good Ryan Reynolds movies. Oh, I'm worried he's doing a third. Because he doesn't feel like the fit for this one, he feels like Ryan Reynolds' yes man. And we know uh, the director of the first one had creative differences with Ryan. That's why he was out and they brought in uh, the, the John Wick secret director to do the second one. And then even more so now, you're just getting his, his buddy. That's the concern I have. All right, and I'm off. And by off, I mean I'm going to be right there. Oh. All right, so Deadpool 3, I'll answer one or two questions, and then we'll head out, because it's late, I'm tired, and we have a four-hour drive tomorrow. Um, Deadpool 3, I'm worried about them watering it down, because MCU has done nothing thus far to give any hints 
about what they're going to do with rated R material. They keep assuring us that they're not going to make it PG-13, but to me, if you're going to keep Deadpool rated R, I don't understand why we're going to get a PG-13 blade, and Daredevil most likely is probably not going to be anywhere near as violent as it was when they bring it back to the Disney+. Plus. Like, They just haven't given me any confidence that they're going to head that direction to start having adult material. Uh, so I'm just worried that they're going to water it down. Um, and the last question was, Hey, Sean, can we expect a review of Better Call Saul Season 5 this weekend? And I don't even have to... <laughs> I don't even have to ask Sean. The answer is no. Um, it'll be next week... Um, late next week, probably at the earliest, because he's going to be gone traveling for the next four or five days and yeah yeah exactly so it'll be a little wait for that one but it's fine we'll um uh, nobody's chomping at the bit for it we're still talking about season six on my channel and everything so i, I have no problem waiting a little bit to do season five all right last two questions for the 31 on 30 run ranking, are you going to watch the extended editions? Yes, I plan to. Uh, mostly just for the Lord of the Rings movies. I don't know if I'll watch the extended versions of The Hobbit. I haven't really heard anybody... P people swear that the extended editions are the only versions to watch of the, the Lord of the Rings movies. I've never heard anybody say that for The Hobbit movies, so I don't know if I need to watch those. Uh, and then I feel like the PG-13 cut of Deadpool 2 might be a bad sign. Um, I think that that was definitely intentional to see what people responded to. I don't know if they liked how people responded to that movie. But, um, yes, they, they wouldn't redo a PG-13 cut of a movie and re-release it. No matter how many Ben Savage, uh, or Fred Savage cameos they put into it for, uh, no reason. So I agree. Alright guys, that is it for us. Um... This was fun. Sorry, I didn't play more than one. I, I sat down and let Sean play, and then I started to get really tired. I'm just like, you keep going. I'll just answer questions. <laughs> so uh, we will... I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Uh, so we got fourth wins. We are going to be heading to Orlando tomorrow. We will be at the convention center for Megacon at some point tomorrow afternoon. Uh, just to kind of get the lay of the land. I don't know how long we'll be there, so you might see us walking around if you're going to be there. Don't hesitate to say hi. Uh, Saturday at 5 is when we're doing our panel, and we'll obviously be there most of the day before and after for that as well. And then back to regular life for me and off to the West Coast for Sean <laughs> on Sunday. So everybody, thank you for watching. We will see you some other time.